came in with the hazmats, Team 4. It was two days before they sealed the city, and our job was to go door to door and find out who was still all right. So we'd knock on doors. Sometimes you'd hear a voice that sounded like a person. So you'd go in. Only it turned out it was a viral. All angry and crazy. Just enough voice left to fool you. Sometimes they weren't alone. The suits are pretty tough. They're PVC with reinforced double-layered polyfiber core. We thought we were safe. It turned out the biters could chew right through it. Sometimes I see some of my old squad shambling around. It gets me down to see them like that. You know the funny thing? They're all biters now, but they can't bite. Because they don't have the brains to take off their masks. I'll tell you, this whole thing is pretty damn strange. All gone. All gone in a heartbeat. Uh, excuse me? Would you look at me, friend, and think that man is a success? No? <laughs> I do not blame you, but I am. You say I was. Almost every gasoline station in Haran I owned. And when they announced the Global Athletics Games, it was supposed to be like... like a windfall. Like winning the lottery. That didn't work out, huh? We look around you, what do you think, huh? Haran was a decent place to live. Maybe a little backward in some ways, but we got by. Then we won the bid for the games. Oh. All the promises they made us. Average citizens were supposed to become wealthy. And the wealthy, well, we were supposed to become kings. I am no king. All the dreams we had, the plans we made, gone in the blink of an eye. And it wasn't just successful entrepreneurs either. The government filled all our heads with golden promises. Are you a window washer? An appliance repairman? A ditch digger? The games will transform your lives. Your world will change. Yes, our world changed. Sure enough. You take a good look around your friend. You take a good look and you tell yourself, I must appreciate what I have right now in this place because it can all be snatched away from you in the time it takes to blink your eyes. That motherfucker kept me locked in a cage for three weeks. I saw plenty. Sometimes it was like he was experimenting. See what would do the job best, you know? Machete, axe, shotgun. Hell, he took this one guy's leg off at the knee and had to hear time how long it took the poor bastard to bleed out. It's a valid strategy. You kill an enemy, well, that is one down. But you hurt an enemy. Then you've got the wounded guy out of the fight. Plus, it'll take at least two more people to take care of him. Three, for the price of one. <laughs> There's value in sadism, I guess. Given the right circumstances. Wow, bet you're a lot of fun at parties. Hey, it's great, right? You want some valuable info? What are you talking about? Listen, I'm a civil engineer. I was working out of a firm in Old Town. Uh, Sector Zero, I guess people are calling it now. And you know what we spent all our time on? The sewers. Well, that sounds thrilling. Hey now, there's no need to be sarcastic. Haran's sewer system is a thing of beauty. If you've got the right eye for it, anyway. You know who should have the right eye for it? You. If you got a point, now would be a good time to get to it. You're patient, huh? Can't wait to get out there and kill some zombies, huh? They go everywhere under the city. You name a location, we've got a sewer line running about five or ten meters below the surface. See, we were able to tie them into a bunch of existing caverns. Waste not what, not am I right? They spread out under the ram in every direction. Most of them are much larger than standard sewer lines, too. Makes navigating around them a snap. Yeah, they sound like a great place for zombies to congregate, too. Well, no system is perfect, is it?
got some advice for you. I don't know if you've noticed, but those dead fucks out there have got pretty keen hearing. Loud noises like moths to a flame, do you get me? You see where I'm going with this? They're hungry, they're mindless, and they're drawn to bangs and booms and shit. So here's what we do. You see somebody you think ought to get gnawed on, and you make a big loud noise next to them. Bring the biters down like a swarm of locusts. Some people might say that's fighting dirty. I say, kiss my ass. I'm not the one getting my face chewed off. Yeah, I'll, uh, guess I'll bear that in mind. Thanks. Crane, you're dealing with Rice, aren't you? You're the one who volunteered. Guilty as charged. Something I can do for you? I believe I can provide some context. You may find it useful. You may not. Okay, lay it on me. I did not witness this firsthand, so take it as hearsay if you want. But it involves his brother, Hassan. I know about Hassan. He died, right? And Rice blames the GRE? He is right to. Hassan was confined to a wheelchair, and he was the only person in the world Rice cared about. Hassan acted as a tempering influence on his brother. Where Rise wanted to go to war, Hassan convinced him to seek peace. And when the outbreak happened, Rise demanded that the GRE evacuate Hassan first and foremost. And they didn't. There was political infighting. Because of the ministry, the GRE dragged their feet. And Hassan died in a zombie attack. The GRE could have removed him from harm's way immediately. Elected not to. And now Rise has lost his moral compass, free to inflict his brand of sadistic lunacy on the populace of Haran. So Rice's beef with the GRE, you're saying he's justified? I do not excuse him. He's a vicious gangster. A blight on this city. I merely wanted to help you understand the enemy you will surely face. Understood. Thanks.